Good afternoon, everyone. I cordially welcome you all for the seventh lecture of the short course on cultural linkages towards an Asian ideology. Today, we are focusing on Sri Lanka as seen by Japan. The program for today is such that the lecture is scheduled to be for 45 minutes with a short break of five minutes, followed by another 30 minutes of the lecture and a question and answer session. May I now have the honor of introducing our guest lecturer, Professor Hajime Tozaki, Professor at the Department of Airline Management at the JF Oberlin University in Japan, as well as adjunct professor at the Department of Social Sciences of KDU. Our esteemed guest holds a PhD of Economics, an MA of Economics, and a BA of Economics from the Kyoto University in Japan and has also studied at the Graduate School of Economic History at the Glasgow University in the United Kingdom. Professor Tozaki has many years of experience in lecturing and research and has held positions in the Teikyo University, Meiji University, Waseda University, Tokyo Metropolitan University, and at present, the JF Oberlin University. In addition to these, he has held important positions such as advisor on tourism for Sri Lanka and counselor for the Lao People's Democratic Republic, to name a couple. At present, he is also an advisor for the Japanese Council of Transport Workers Unions, an advisor for the Transport Workers Federation, and a counselor of the Japan Forum for Research on Public Policy. Through his many academic writings, Professor Tozaki has contributed his vast academic knowledge to the fields of economics, airline management, aviation, transport, tourism, and Japanese finance, to name a few. Professor Tozaki has also been instrumental in KDU, receiving the grant from the Eurasia Foundation, which has made this course a reality. Sir, we are profoundly honored to have you here with us, and we warmly welcome you to deliver this lecture. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Hajime Tozaki. Now I'm on, on a business trip. I'm here in Fukushima, uh, which is located uh, northeast part of Japan. Maybe some of you might have heard the name of this prefecture. Fukushima is uh, very famous uh, for the nuclear accident, which happened 2011 by quite big earthquake. So many foreign people living in Japan uh, very severely be afraid of the effect of the nuclear accident. However, in fact, it is quite safe now. So you can come to Japan everywhere safely. So in the near future, you will visit Japan and study about Japan. So today, I hope my lecture will help you have some understanding of Japan's current situation and our university. Maybe you will study here. Now, I want to begin uh, with my self-introduction. I'm 58 years old. A boy in 1963, very old person. I'm sorry. Now I belong to the Faculty of Business Management of our university. So my speciality is the study transport and policy and tourism policy. I worked for JAL for nine years. That's why mainly I am uh, regarded as a specialist of airline to uh, airline policies. However, now I'm also interested in every field of transportation. 
from buses, taxis, and of course, railways, and so on. So our campus has five locations. And my uh, department is located in Shinjuku, you can hear. So very near from the center of the Tokyo. And quite convenient to walk around and visit some uh, very important persons. And this is the campus. Upper Lands is the central office or central buildings located in Machida, a uh, suburb of the Tokyo. And Lower Run is a picture of our campus located in the center of the Tokyo. Now, Sorry. Yeah. I want to show you some video. Sorry, without the sound, but you can see it's a uh, campus life of our campus. A quite new one. So 80% of the students are women. This is a library without any books on the computers. This is our dean. This is the seminar others outside of school uh, classroom. Maybe it's very unique. Look at the seats. At the cafeteria. It's a bit quite different from the current situation because of the coronavirus. This is a lesson for the cooking. You can see the detail of the cooking uh, through the video camera. Yes, this is a uh, scenery. This is of the cooking. Thank you. Right, sorry. So this is the purpose of today's talk. By knowing the current situation of Japan regarding tourism, I hope that it will be useful as a reference for you and your country to make some policy formulation. Maybe many of you already know that uh, Japan is an island country and has developed a unique economy for that reason, separated from the, the big land. So we can, uh, we have formed a very unique uh, customs. So its population is about 
126 million. However, the number of population has rapidly decreasing. And that's a problem, such as a big, uh, so shortage of the labor force. So we now understand that it is quite important for us to invite foreign labor force all over the world to supply for the uh, shortage of the labor force in Japan. So uh, does that mean also uh, tourism is quite important for us to let you understand the real Japan and want you to be eager to come to Japan. The capital is Tokyo and the economy is becoming more concentrated in, in Tokyo. So uh, before the coronavirus, is, we are always suffering from the quite many people, especially in rushing hour, when we use uh, the public transportation, it is quite, quite congested by the lots of people. So it's quite difficult to make space to get into the very packed uh, trains or buses. So this is a pyramid of the population. So as you see, very all people has a very large part of the whole uh, population pyramid. So it is quite bad for some for the young people to sustain their society by paying a very heavy tax. So we should uh, promote some privatization to stimulate the market, to improve that kind of quite different situation. However, as you see, uh, coronavirus has damaged and we have to change the mind and how to do with us uh, helping the people suffering from the coronavirus and at the same time, how to reconstruct the society or the market as a whole to get back to the normal situation in the economy. Okay, one of the uh, unique points uh, compared with your country is that uh, Japan has, already you know, the four seasons. Spring, we can see a beautiful cherry blossom. Cherry blossom is a natural flower of Japan. And this uh, photo is quite famous because it is taken by the foreign people. Quite a popular spot for the uh, foreign visitors. Uh, which mountains, which is for the most uh, famous symbol of Japan, and the typical traditional symbol, and Chebusan, the set is a natural flower. So you can pack three type of symbols of Japan. So many uh, foreign people want to go to the places where they can this photo. It is located about four or five uh, hours from Tokyo by car. So maybe when you be in Japan, you can try and to take that kind of photo. And the summer, uh, mainly uh, fireworks. Uh, are the, the big uh, things we can look in for the two. Uh, unfortunately, these two years, we, can, we can't hold, we couldn't hold 
this type of big festival all over Japan because of the coronavirus. Uh, next year, I really hope to see the kind of big and beautiful fireworks uh, everywhere in Japan, especially in Tokyo. The autumn, red leaves, uh, yellow leaves, the also symbol of Japan, Japan's autumn. And winter, you can see a lot of uh, red snow. Of course, heavy snow is sometimes suffering with us. Uh, these days, uh, Hokkaido is the north part of Japan. Uh, it is snowed. It is snowing heavily. So many flights were canceled because of the heavy uh, snow in these days. But as long as we see the scenery, we can enjoy the very big, um, very beautiful sceneries, typically in snow. Yeah. Also, I will show you uh, some video which uh, show the national scenery. This, uh, this, is, this is quite a uh, uh, fresh one. It is a desert in Japan. Yeah, it is a host, uh, hot springs. Quite traditional buildings uh, you can see. Yes, it is Kyoto. Uh, sorry, Hope Prefecture. Right. This is a special island. You can see quite a lot of cats. Sunflowers.
This is also Tokyo. Tokyo has so, so many islands. This is Sun Road. Also introduced by the TV program. The natural Christmas tree. This is a snow snow house. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, those films are very uh, typical ones. Uh, frankly speaking, I don't know some of the places. However, uh, yes, all the very famous books uh, in Japan. Okay, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, move on to the next one. Uh, how about how about the world heritage in Japan? Anyway, uh, the number of uh, world heritage is lower than your country. Our cultural heritage is nineteen, and her natural heritage is four. Uh, such as uh, to see on the upper part, uh, lower part, Mount Fuji is one of the cultural heritage, not the natural heritage because the amount of garbage thrown away uh, by the climbers are very huge. So uh, the world's uh, hate registration was uh, rejected by that reason. So Mount Fuji is one of the cultural hedges. I think it's very uh, yeah, sad. Uh, thinking about the beauty of the mountain. And right side, maybe you have already seen uh, the video shown uh, just before, uh, the photograph uh, taken in Kyoto. Uh, Kyoto is a very typical city and maybe famous all over the world. Maybe uh, some of you have already been there. If not, Yes, you must go there. Um, I am graduated from the Kyoto University. So I'm very lucky. However, in summer and in winter, quite terrible because Kyoto city is surrounded by the mountains. So in summer, it's quite hot. And in winter, it's quite cold. So. Uh, if you beat it as one of the traveler, it's quite nice. However, living in Kyoto is quite tough. So what is your image of Japan? 
uh, these days, uh, unfortunately, we can see so much students from for uh, from foreign countries in Japan. But before the coronavirus, I have or also had uh, many foreign students. They always say that the most uh, clear image of Japan is animations. Uh, maybe some of you know the left side. This is um, a very famous animation. Uh, I don't remember the name, sorry. And right one is the current most popular animation in Japan. Last year, I also show, uh, showed the short video of the animation shown right side. And next year, we can see the new version of the animation of right side. Okay, I'll show you. This is the uh, marginal cubing, uh, very popular. Uh, not only Japanese young people, but also young people all over the world. A short video. This is followed by the real um, scenery you can see in Europe. Yes. And this is a little newer one. The title is Kimi no Nawa, which means, what is your name? It is also the title of the very old film in Japan. However, the content or story of the both uh, films is quite different from each other. So this one. Have the colors, those quite beautiful. It is quite realistic. もう、こんな田舎やだよ。こんな人生やだ。なんて俺たちは夢の中で。切り替わってる。君の人生全然世界は僕は君を探し始めた。僕に確かなことが一つだけある。私たちは絶対すぐに分かる。言おうと思ったんだ。お前が世界のどこにいても必ず会いに行くって。あ
And uh, finally, that is the latest, uh, latest one, Kimetsu no Yaiba. As I said before, it is uh, just now quite popular in Japan. So many people are looking for the new version of these uh, stories. Let me just show you. Uh, So these three types of animations are quite different from each other. However, all of them are very popular. And the details are quite different. So this is a, uh, yes, the characteristic of this animation. So each director has strongly uh, cling to the details of the stories and the reality. And what kind of world they could create and attract me, many people. This is a Japanese characteristics. Yes, uh, focus on the details and uh, yes, make every effort the, to make screen very beautiful, our scenes very beautiful, right? Okay, I'm uh, very sorry for spending so much time looking, for, uh, looking at uh, the animations. Okay. Now I want to introduce you some of the cities, uh, city of use. Uh, this is a picture of the inter, uh, intersections in front of Sibiya station. Sibiya is a very big city, one of the big cities uh, in Tokyo and very popular for young people. So Shibuya culture is one of the unique ones, even for Japanese. So as a picture of uh, the intersection has become a new tourist uh, spot or uh, what kind of symbol for the Japanese tour. Uh, Japanese tour. Now you can see so lots of people just about uh, four or five months ago, which means in July or in August, you can see all the few people. And last year, much fewer people we can see, we could see this uh, place. However, uh, this week, uh, fortunately, we can see so many people just before the Christmas season. In Japan, Christmas is very a big point, a big event, especially for the young people, rather than the New Year Day. For the elder people in Japan, a New Year Day is more popular than Christmas. However, young people want to enjoy the Christmas with sweethearts or friends and and so for that reason, they gather in the big cities, especially uh, this uh, Sibuya is a, one of the best uh, typical center for the young people to enjoy themselves, uh, holding a party or a holding party on road, not in the store, and that's a problem. And uh, these two day, two year or two year or three years, from ago, uh, even uh, the Halloween, we sometimes see the very uh, severe situation, uh, making fuss and throwing so many trusses on the road, holding party on road. And that's one of the social problems now we are suffering. And Lopongi. Have you ever named the city of uh, name of the city Lopongi? 
uh, Lopongi is a very beautiful for a little elder people, rather than severe. Uh, very, yes, uh, many people enjoy the nightlife around the Lopongi, especially in this season. Okay, again, this is the final uh, film. It's a nice city. Midtown is located in Lopongi. Yes, this is just the Christmas season. So it's quite enjoyable to see a lot of um, tree lights and illuminations decorated around the trees and the surrounding the park or something like that. Yes, you can see the Christmas tree painted on the flag. So I want to know how about the Christmas day in your country? It's just like that. Okay, I will. So in this season, we can see this type of Christmas trees everywhere in the city. So you can see the ice skate ring. This is just at the center of the Tokyo. It's not like the New York. Maybe you, you will see. Have you ever played the skiing or skating? When I was young, I tried. Now I'm old, so. I gave that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Let's move on to the next part. Apart from Japan, I want to think about your country for a short period. Our image of Sri Lanka is one, a serenity. Maybe serenity is all, also popular all over the world, I, still, I know. 
and aloe vera. I tried once, they're quite nice. <laughs> In recent years, Sri Lanka has been introduced as a tourist destination on TV programs in Japan. However, oh, sorry. I think it can be said that it has penetrated throughout Japan yet. So that's why uh, Sri Lanka will become an attractive tourist destination for Japan as a new area or a new destination for us and as a country to visit uh, from now on after the coronavirus. Uh, to that end, uh, uh, that is to increase the number of tourists from Japan to your country is necessary for KDU and our university to work together to promote tourism in Sri Lanka. So I want you, all of you to think about how to promote uh, Sri Lanka to Japan, thinking about the nationality or market of Japanese people. So this course is the first step toward that. And maybe for your countries or for you, Japan's image is again, the Mount Fuji animation. And maybe some of you are interested in Japanese food, sushi and tempura. Yes, I really tasted good. So, some days, I hope you should try this food. Okay, then please think about the general meaning of the tourism. Tourism can contribute to the peace or the improvement of a national relationship and stimulate the economy itself. First, economic aspects. As you see, a, a tourism industry can provide employment for many people. Yes, in this area, it is quite difficult to automate the service. It depends on the quality of uh, each person's mind, how to serve or offer the uh, good service. So a great economic effect, uh, economic effect can be expected from the expenditures of travelers, such as transportation expenses, accommodation expenses, purchase of some as uh, souvenirs and pay for the service and hospitality. Yes, hospitality is quite key. Whether we can succeed in promoting a tourism. Then let's think about the political aspect of the tourism. Direct interaction of travelers with locals can be expected to promote mutual understanding. As a result, it is possible to lead to political stabilization between the two countries. Unfortunately, Japan had a very uh, severe deed uh, against uh, countries near Japan, such as mainland China, Korea, uh, Taiwan and so on. So we have a negative image. They have a negative image to Japan. It is quite difficult to overcome the difficulties. However, 
soothe the children and talk with each other directly and see the real situation of Japan. Maybe they can understand that Japanese is not so bad people. <laughs> and uh, we can improve the relationship with each other through the direct interaction. I think it's a quite important point, especially for Japanese. So I hope it's the same for the other countries. Through the travel, we should improve or heighten the relationship and create the new values and success. Then, uh, a tourism industry is an important industry for all of the world. That's because uh, that accounts for about 10% to 20% of GDP. Quite a big contribution to the industry can have to the total economy all over the world. Especially for the developing countries, tourism has a very big potential in uh, developing their own countries. So it can take advantage of the characteristics of each country. That's the point. You can uh, uh, utilize every point or every aspect of your country to promote the truth. Natural aspect, cultural aspect, uh, technical aspect, Yes, we can think about many kinds of aspects to use to promote the truth. And depend on the method, you can generate high prof profitability in tourism. Just because compared with the, such as manufacturing, manufacturing industries, Tourism industries, in tourism industries, human factors can have a very big uh, influence, a big, big part of the industry. So humans can create many profitability or uh, such kind of possibility to make added values Yes, that's the point. And along with the diversification of the people's values, quite a new style of travel has um, appeared or created, such as this you can see as a picture of the left side. Yes, you can see as a boat and tackling with uh, the big wave. This is so-called adventure tourism. And this is the right side. Very young child uh, planting the rice. That is so-called green tourism. It's not limited to the young people. Even adults can enjoy themselves touching with the nature and playing in the natural mm -hmm. field. So it's a quite good to recover or get rid of the stress which we have accumulated through the urban life. Okay, then I want to uh, explain you the current situation in Japanese workplace. Uh, the safety in Japanese tourism policy that goes um, about 
30 or 40 years ago, in Japan, tourism has been thought as um, not so important factors. That's because labor is very important. So, contrary, leisure is not so important. That means it creates nothing. And that is the idea of the old elder people. However, the weakening of the international competitiveness of the manufacturing industry in Japan due to the affiliation of the yen. In 1985, 1985, plus uh, some international agreement to help United States not to be corrupted by the strong dollar, uh, other major countries made their own currency weaker to help United States to uh, trade aggressively and improve their uh, deficit uh, and the uh, natural budget. So as a result, as you see at the first line, the international competitiveness of the Japanese manufacturing industries has been declining quite rapidly. So we had to change my, our mind and focus on the other factors, how to revive from the deep deflation. Uh, deflation. And then we can find that we could find that tourism has a big potential to promote or revive the Japanese economy. And at the same time, we can understand that leisure is quite important, even for work more efficiently. Yes, research and leisure. Just we maybe tired away, are tired or exhausted. We can't concentrate on the work. So leisure of our rest is quite important. So a uh, private uh, priority has changed from the manufacturing to the leisure or leisure related industry. And one of the promising industry is tourism. So in fact, uh, these five days, uh, five years or well, six years in Japan, the number of inland tourists has increased rapidly since 2012. And the biggest factor for that is that the condition for issuing visa have been relaxed. That's why so many people rushed into Japan, especially from the East, uh, Southeast Asia. It is unlikely that fundamental changes have been made to the actual tourism strategy in Japan, such as marketing. That's the point. So I quite doubt, I'm quite doubtful whether Japan has become a tourism country. That goes. Just I explain to you. Yes, only the condition for issuing visa has been changed. 
So find number change. We can find. So under the situation in 2020, as you see, the tourism industry was hit hard by the coronavirus. So number of tourism, tourists from abroad sharply down from 32 million to four, only 4 million, only one eighth. And that's quite big impact we have we had to our economy. Yeah, at the same time, why the number of children from abroad has become rapidly increasing? Is the LCC rise in the market? And maybe you have ever heard the term LCC. LCC means low cost carrier. Uh, maybe your country has one or two LCCs, is that right? In Japan, we have uh, several LCC companies, but uh, the percentage those LCCs occupy for the whole market of airline market is only 10%. And that's a quite unique or typical compared with other Southeast Asian countries. So Japanese government or some influential persons is now trying to increase the percent, percentage of the LCCs in the market, but it's quite difficult just because sorry, later I will show you the reason. Okay. I'm going to omit this part. A new coronavirus, the outbreak of the new coronavirus since last year, February, has been hitting the Japanese economy in the world wide. There are various views on the countermeasures. However, it is certain that the medical, uh, medical system is facing a collapse. It is still the same today. Just now, the number of people infected by the coronavirus is quite small just now. But from the last year, the number is slightly increasing, slightly increasing. So uh, we are very afraid of the sixth wave, a sixth burst from the new year. Uh, just as I said before, from the end of this year and the New Year days, so many people will travel just for coming back to uh, their home or visiting friends or visiting their relatives. So in the process, yes, maybe coronavirus will spread out as the number of the people infected by coronavirus will increase. And then we also have to be threatened by that effect of the coronavirus. So a full scale recovery may take several years. Quite a big problem. So it will, of course, inf influence the travel industry. Okay, yeah, let's think about the movement of people after the coronavirus. 
uh, under the difficult situation of the coronavirus, remortalization has been pro uh, promoted as a countermeasure against coronavirus. Yes, Zoom, now we are using. That's a one good example. So thanks for the Zoom, we can have this kind of lecture from outside of your country. Of course, yes, really I want to be to you and see you and face you directly. But it be it be it isn't impossible. However, now we can talk with us uh, through the Zoom. Therefore, uh, there's a view that uh, people may not move as much as before. We don't travel to the office. It can save the time, and you can do more things that you want to do is a positive aspect of the influence of the coronavirus. However, such claims has been made repeatedly historically since the 1980s. There have been so many books published on this topic through the, pro, uh, through the development of the information uh, tools, people will not move. But as long as we see and the, their data, I think it's not be true. I think it's be. I think that it is not true. People still moving hardly. A uh, hard. So moving hard. Yes, it must be. That's because through the Zoom or other remote tools, we can save the personal data or very uh, big, uh, very important data because of hackers. Almost impossible to save your important data from the hackers. So uh, we have to depend on the yes, traditional ways of working to some extent. In fact, today, this day, the movement of people has become active, both internationally and domestically. So after the, some requirement, uh, sorry, after the coronavirus, I think the movement of people will recover and become as active as before. Okay. Okay, the I Right. A little, I want to uh, talk or refer to the over tourism. As I said before, before the coronavirus, the surge of inbound tourism has caused various problems in Japan. A typical example is the destruction of the natural environment. As long as the number of tourism, tourists is increasing, the natural environment surely be damaged by the increase of the tourism. There is also a great deal of cultural friction. For example, in Japan, as there is a problem with the noise generated by foreign tourism, staying at private residence, in Kyoto, you can see the bottom part, left side, uh, right side, uh, a lady uh, wearing the traditional wear, 
This is Michael, a talented person playing and dancing in front of the customers. So some uh, foreign tourists chased Michael and caused trouble. That is one of the major problems. And over tourism happened all over the world. So before the coronavirus, when the National Conference of Tourism was held in Japan, the main theme of the conference is how to deal with over tourism. So all the, all the national, um, very famous uh, tourist spots all over the world have been suffered from the over tourism. So I think after the coronavirus, we shouldn't repeat the same conflict or same problem of over tourism. So I think the good way for us is to invite more wealthy people from abroad. So I, I insist that the government should promote the tourism for the wealthy customers. That's why uh, the reason is shown uh, be, uh, uh, below the magnitude of the economic effect that each person brings. Yes, wealthy customers consume so much and pay so much money. But to do so, that is to increase the number of wealthy tourists from all over the world. For in Japan, it is important to develop the infrastructure for its acceptance. For example, human resources. Yes. To treat the wealthy customers. The service should be high and hospitality should be quite defined. So the training of the human resources is quite important and accommodations and transportation, special transportation for the wealthy customers. Later I will uh, refer to the private jobs. So extremely talented persons are uh, needed to actually respond to detailed requests. That's why we need very talented persons to deal with a special request for the wealthy people. And special transportation of wealthy people is a private jet. It can maximize the value of time in your business or in your time. The mobility is extremely important in the business scene in internationalization. Yes, I know that uh, there are many convenient tools, especially technical field. Again, I want to refer to the Zoom. Yes, through the Zoom, you can talk easy for the person in the other countries. However, it is still risky to decide whether we should promote the business or not only through the Zoom. That's because Zoom, through the Zoom, we can only see a part of real life or real information. It is quite limited, so it will distort the decision or make your decision mistaken. 
So mobility is extremely important. You have to visit the counter person or counter country and judge directly watching the real situation or real scene. It's quite important in the inter uh, information society. Okay, it's I omit. So absent of the super luxury hotels in Japan, the average day daily room charge for the hotel where the wealthy stays is said to be 7 million yen. And that is, as you see, $65,000. It's an average charge for the wealthy people all over the world. Unfortunately, in Japan, there's no uh, no such kind of hotel. I know. How many your country? I know your country has very luxury hotels, but I don't know exactly uh, the room charges of those hotels. Please tell me later of the registration of your hotels in your country. I really want to know the registration of your country to promote your country. And uh, uh, breaking away from masterism, which means improved profitability, is a key, how to create a valid value, uh, added value in the tourism section. And such as medical tourism is quite promising as uh, because it requires long stay of the rich and they will accompany their families and spend so much money there. So it is quite uh, promising. And uh, it's quite difficult to judge whether integral result is promising or not, especially in our country. Integrated result is a facilities, including casinos. So concerns of the casino addiction is a normal feeling for most of the Japanese people. But I don't think so. That means I don't concern about the casino addiction. That's good. In Japan, there are many pachinko. A pachinko is a, a thing you see on the right side of the picture. And this is a pachinko. I think it's very addictive. But it's illegal in Japan. So why casino is illegal while patching is allowed to open in every town, many places in Japan. As you see, in Korea, patching is prohibited. I think it's natural. So you see, during summer days in Japan, mothers leave their babies in the cars and become addicted to the string shot. During which, during which time the baby can die. And in fact, some babies died because of these reasons. It's very tragic. Then, uh, thank you very much for listening to me for a long time. Then finally, I want to show the conclusion. Uh, Sri Lanka is a still unknown country for many uh, Japanese people. Therefore, depending on future efforts, 
great economic benefits can be obtained. That's the point. There's still many room, much room for us to develop between your country and Japan by appealing to the Japanese people. Your country can attract so many people to your country. That's because uh, your country's natural surrounding is quite nice. People are gentle. Many water heritage you have. So it must be attracted. Uh, Japanese are must be attracted by your natural or cultural factors. To that end, it's necessary to understand the current situation in Japan for your countries and in your country for Japanese people. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Sensei, Sisume no Tokuranda. Students, uh, do you have any questions? If you have any questions, comments, right, you can you can ask the, uh, sorry, it, it may be very hard time, <laughs> Professor, <laughs> try to have doing this lecture more than one hour continuously. So students, uh, I think that he will be very happy if you have any clarifications, questions or comments. Right, please. Sorry for my bad in, uh, English. Maybe some of no, you no. can't understand my word. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it was perfect. The, the, the content was very important no, at this time. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. Uh, first of all, sir, your English, in, English wasn't bad at all. It was actually very easy to understand. Uh, <laughs> no problems there. Uh, so, sir, I just have a small clarification. Um, so uh, you said that uh, tourism took a bit of a hit after the uh, emergence of the pandemic, yeah? So uh, how is it going about in this year, even though it is not properly calculated because uh, this year is not has, has not ended yet? Uh, you, could you say that it has increased uh, with regard to 2020's tourism industry or is it still in the depths? Mm. Quite difficult questions. Yes, I hope uh, tourism industries increase uh, the number of tourism. However, uh, just looking at the survey done by several research institutes, uh, it will take so much time to recover fully. However, as far as uh, tourism, is concerned. I think to some extent the demand for the tourism will recover in the near future. So um, at least in the domestic market, the number of tourism is surely increasing even in the United States and in Japan maybe in many countries all over the world. So in this stage, we should survive through the development or recover in the area of domestic tourism and uh, impact micro-tourism. Uh, maybe you have heard the name of the micro-tourism. Micro-tourism is a tourism visiting just near your recent area. So in many aspects, we can create the new type of tourism. So micro-tourism is one of the example. And through the experience, we can uh, apply it to the larger area. And uh, thinking about the new type of uh, new styles of tourism, we can uh, develop a new stage 
of the tourism, even in the foreign or international areas. Sorry, is that right? Yes, sir, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I think, Professor, uh, even in Sri Lanka, uh, the now the uh, domestic people are more moving here and there. So we can see the results actually end of this year. I yes. mean, during the Christmas season as well as uh, uh, because you know that uh, end of the December will be holiday for yes. most of the places, but the uh, government also it's a little bit worry about the gatherings due to this mm. pandemic situation. Yeah, leisure, you, you have mentioned that leisure industry, uh, yes. right? even for Sri Lanka at the moment, uh, mm. we, our people, uh, I mean, do not think much about that type of industry. Yes. Right? We are focusing on working environment, I mean, working hard, right? Yes. We should yes. work hard to, you know, support our GDP, support our mm. economy as, uh, as you have done uh, maybe 10 or 20 years ago, right? Mm. Now we are practicing yes. the same similar type of situation in Sri Lanka. But we yes. can learn a lot of lessons because in future, mm. right, uh, we will have to face the similar situation. Lesson mm. will be important to improve the quality of life. Yes. Even today, in some places, uh, we are facing uh, the similar problem. Mm. Right? The quality of life finally, mm. you know, can lead the uh, welfare of the people in the country. Something yes. like that. Yeah. The yes. students, uh, I'm sorry, if I start uh, talking, then <laughs> right, I, I'll take much of uh, your time. So, mm. uh, we'll... So well, I would like to give this chance to you know uh, chance uh, to ask questions from our students side. Mm. Students, do you have anything? Any? Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Professor, yes. there is a question in the chat. Can I read it out to you? It's from a student. Yes. Um, so he or she has asked, as a pretty homogeneous country, how do you think the locals would react to foreigners? Ah, locals would react to foreign. <laughs> yes, it's uh, quite the case for Japan. Oh. Yes, um, yes, we. It's also a big, big problem. We are very interested in, and then really we are tackling for this kind of problem. So. To some extent, automatic translator is one of the help for them. So as you see, most Japanese local people are afraid of talking with foreign people in English. That's a problem. So these days, the Japanese government introduced some kind of devices of automatic uh, translation devices. So it's a kind of help for them to positively uh, touch with the people visiting local areas from foreign countries. And uh, yes, I think the key person is very important to change their mind that because um, in fact for local people I can't see I can't uh, meet the foreign people even now so it may be necessary for them to have some person who facilitate to uh, interact to the foreign people and make them understand that foreign people are not the one who they are afraid of, I'm just a normal person. <laughs> so, 
sorry, uh, um, it's quite difficult to explain you, but the one, one main point is the help with the technical devices is one way to solve this kind of problem. Sorry. And, uh, okay, one question I still have. How Japan has managed the cost of the Olympics in pandemic situation without any audience and foreign pictures? Thank you very much. Yes, it's quite difficult. It was very difficult to manage the cost of the Olympic Games. Yes, in fact, we had huge deficits or minus. However, even so, it is quite contribute, uh, contributing to the people to cheer, uh, cheer them up, not in the economic aspect, but cheering people up is a very big me has a big big meaning for Japan itself. Yes, it's one of the investment for the people living in Japan. Without holding the Tokyo Olympic Games, maybe people didn't get any motives to live actively or combat but deal with the coronaviruses. Yes, it is combat with the coronaviruses. So to do so, cheering people up against the coronaviruses is quite important. So yes, we all know that holding the Tokyo Olympic, Olympic Games is not beneficial in economic aspect, but Still, that it has it had a very good meaning for Japan itself. Yes, it is my question. Um, my yes answer. Right. Oh, so many questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, then no, I will okay. yes I will answer those questions through the um email. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good actually because uh, you know the time is now around in Sri Lanka four thirty. I think that you have spent more than one hour, one and a half hours. So yes. uh, our coordinator, our I mean the assistant coordinator, will collect yes. those questions and forward it to you through the email, and uh, we will uh, I mean the back to them later. Yes, thank you, Bench. I will surely do it. Right. Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks on behalf of the students of the short course on cultural linkages toward an Asian ideology. First, I would like to thank our lecturer, Professor Hajime Tosaki, for sharing his time and knowledge with us and for delivering this lecture amidst his busy schedule. Sir, you address set the tone for this course by clearly indicating how Sri Lanka is seen by Japan. We are blessed to have your contribute to this course. And next, I wish to thank Dr. Hemanth Premaratna and all other staff at KDU for bringing these lectures together. Thank you.